What's up, baggers? I'm Anthony Ione, back in the lab on another episode of Tips and Tricks. Today's tip and probability is called the Rule of 33. The most exciting shot in the game of cornhole is called the airmail. An airmail is a shot that eliminates the need to slide up the board to find the hole, and instead, baggers will shoot the full 30-foot distance directly at the hole, almost like a swish in basketball. Strategically, the airmail is a good shot choice when an opponent's bag obstructs or blocks your lane to the hole and the bagger will go over the top to maximize the three points per bag instead of laying up on the board for one point. At any skill level of cornhole, when similar skilled baggers are going head to head, decision making or when to shoot that airmail can be the difference between winning and losing, giving you that needed edge to come out on top. With any shot selection, baggers will measure risk versus reward. Within the 20 second shot clock, a lot is going on in the thought process like, what is the score? How many bags do I have left in the round? Do I have last bag? What board speed conditions am I dealing with? Uh, what bag type am I throwing? What bags is my opponent throwing? What is my capability to make the shot in question and much, much more. It could be quite overwhelming for all levels of play. However, elite baggers have seen these scenarios so many times and understand their skill set intimately that the decision making seems instant in most cases, but certainly not all. To help simplify the complexities of the decision making process for the airmail, I'm going to introduce the rule of 33. Uh, we'll take it a step further and we'll introduce the rule of 25. Then we'll finish off with some board scenarios to keep an eye out for in your upcoming matches. The rule of 33. There are two levels of scoring in cornhole. On for one, in for three. In the case of airmail, board it for one, shoot it for three. So mathematically, when should I shoot that airmail? To simplify the math, let's make two assumptions. I'll assume I'll always hit the board for one when I need it. A layup, right? I'm going to hit the board, I'm going to get my one. Let's assume we never knock the opponent's bag in on accident when we're shooting the airmail. Yes, on the board for one is not guaranteed and sometimes we're gonna knock in the opponent's bag and this changes the math slightly. However, it becomes increasingly negligible the more skilled the bagger is at both hitting the shot and making good shot choices. Based on these assumptions, how good do I need to be at airmail when it is statistically better to shoot the airmail over boarding it for one? We can simplify it with these two scenarios. If I have 100 attempts to simply board the bag, I would score 100 points. 100 board attempts, 100 ones, 100 points. If I hit 33 out of 100 airmail, I would score 99 points. Anything greater than 33 would be greater than 100 points. So here is where we have our break even point or your over under. If you shoot over 33% airmail, you will statistically score more points than boarding it for one every time. Hence the rule of 33. If you incorporate the rule of 33, you have to know where you stand in the probability of hitting your own airmail. In engineering, we call that a large enough sample size. You can't hit three or four airmail in one match and say you're a 75% airmailer. You can't just throw 10 random airmail and hit four and say, I'm a 40% airmailer. The sample size is way, way too small. It takes 15 minutes to throw 100 airmail at a bare minimum, bare minimum. Consider your percentage of airmail over 100 attempts. Even that is a small enough sample size, but will get you kind of in the ballpark. Ultimately, you should throw 100 airmail every day for 10 days, then consider that your airmail percent for the shot selection using the rule of 33. Now, in reality, we know match play. It mixes up your shots so much. You might have a slide, you might have a cut, a block, then an airmail. So the thousand airmail in a row is statistically gonna be your best case scenario. It gets much more difficult in match play. Let's take the rule of 33 a step further and consider a common scenario called the drag bag. What if my bag is now sitting on the hole like this and we have some laundry in the way kind of blocking up my lane to the hole? The risk versus reward scenario just changed, right? The risk is still the same. I still have to hit that airmail. However, if I do, my reward is higher. Instead of hitting that airmail for three, I can now hit that airmail for five more points and a total gain of six. Five because I already had one sitting on the board and if I hit it, I get five more for six. Let's make some assumptions to simplify the math here. Will we drag that bag every single time successfully? No, we won't. Sometimes we're gonna hit that airmail clean and not drag it. Sometimes we are gonna drag it and sometimes we're gonna miss it and go off the bag. Now, we kind of find in cornhole, it's probably around half. I mean, we have to make an assumption here on the math. A lot of times we hit it, a lot of times we don't. So let's assume 
50-50 chance we're gonna hit that half of the time. Based on those assumptions, how good do I need to be at airmail to score more points hitting a drag bag than laying up for one every time? The answer might surprise you, it was definitely an eye-opener for me, 25%. If you are better than a one out of four airmailer on average, again, on average, you will statistically score more points shooting the drag bag airmail over laying up on the board. While we're on the topic of airmail, let's build up a few scenarios to add to the rule of 33 and 25 to incorporate into your game. Let's get the obvious out of the way. If your opponent, in this case, let's say your opponent is blue, is sitting short of the hole, and you guys still have a bunch of bags left, you're early in the round, shooting an airmail this early might not be a good choice. In most cases, you would lay up behind it with a block. You've got so many other options like roll bags and get arounds for future discussion. So let's kind of just get that obvious out of the way. Now, if you have your opponent blocked up, like in this case, the rule of 33 and 25 then kicks into play. Look out for this scenario in your future matchups. Your opponent's bag back of the hole and your bag short of the hole. Of course, the hole's wide open, the airmail is good to go, but also, if you shoot long in air, you knock your opponent's bag off. No harm, no foul, that was a free shot. If you shoot short, there is a chance of knocking your own bag in the hole and potentially getting both bags. Then we have the ultimate best case scenario, and with a little luck on your side, you hit the air mail, drag your bag in, and knock your opponent off the back with the and one. So in conclusion, with this setup, with your bag short of the hole and your opponent back of the hole, all of your misses work in your favor. This is a win-win scenario, decreasing the risk with the same reward. If you are anywhere close to a 33% or better, shoot this airmail. Now let's flip the script. If you are back of the hole and your opponent is short of the hole, the risk increases significantly with the same reward. If you are anywhere around that 33%, do not shoot this airmail. You go long, you knock yourself off for minus two, you go short, you knock your opponent in. Of course, the decision gets tough if you have the game-winning bag in your hand or someone is far above 33% airmail. One last scenario for my elite baggers out there. How many times have you shot the airmail when your opponent is sitting on the hole like this? Your airmail is getting so good, you are convinced you can slip past without dragging him in and avoid the drag. And if you don't, you're good with the drag bag wash. Considering all the assumptions mentioned, and after running the math, and this is for my elite baggers, if you are greater than 66% airmail shooter on average, shoot this shot. Now let's be real, there's very few baggers out there shooting greater than 66% airmail on average. Mike Morton, who tracked airmail over a period of time, showed that after 90 airmail, Matt Morton, who's one of the best, shot 67% airmail in match play. His opponents were only in the 50th percentile. So it shows that it's possible, but it's limited to a few baggers out there that should shoot that shot on average. Now, if you got that game winner in the hand and you're a high percentage airmail shooter, shoot it. Let's close out this tips and trick video from some of my in the box footage at 2020 Worlds with my man Kevin Warner, USC executive himself, showing off the benefits of shooting the airmail with risk first reward in mind. Kevin's one of the best airmailers out there and he's got the game winner in his hand. Shoot it. Florida out to the right. Let's see if Kevin finds his line here. That one's solid. Lane side blocker for Kev. Chance to win this with a four bagger coming in slick side. Oh, he's off the back. Good bag from Florida. That's what he tried to do the first time. Florida's got to be in. Clean airmail to win it. He's going up. Oh, he gets it. Airmailed over a slick side game changer to get a four. Oh my gosh. 